It started out as a dream car. It captured America's heart along the way. Corvette. Get me one. Hey everybody, we've got such a special video for you today because what we have here are two generations of the most affordable Corvette you can buy. The C4 from the 1980s and the C5 from the late 90s and early 2000s. And in this video, we're gonna find out which one is best for a small amount of money. In order to find out which of these two performance cars is best, we are going to do a number of performance tests. And those are our classic TFL classics quarter mile drag race. We're also going to do a rolling race as well as a braking test. Corvette is the definitive expression of a high performance sports car. Oh, right, Kay, so tell me a little bit about that C4 Corvette. Uh, my Corvette is a 1988. I've got, of course, a tune port injection, 5.7 liter V8, and let me check my plaque, handy for telling me how much power I have. 245 horsepower, 340 pound-feet of torque. Now, this is a 1999 C5 Corvette, so it's the next generation of Corvette. This is just a standard car with an LS1, so it develops 345 horsepower, but similar torque to your car, which is interesting. This, of course, is an all-aluminum engine. That's what the LS is known for, small block 5.7. So we're gonna see what a, right around 10 years worth of progress has done to the Corvette. Yeah, another big difference being that my car is a four-speed manual and your car is an automatic. Yeah, that's right. So, kind of the deal with the C5s are really hard to find with the manual transmission, and especially if you want to keep them affordable, the automatic is the way to go. However, it should affect performance in a negative way out here. I also have 275 gearing in this car. Crazy. Yeah, both of these cars are like that. All right, so, um, now, weight-wise, both just over 3,000 pounds, which is pretty similar. Um, we're going to see what the difference in generation is, C4 to C5. Okay, both these cars have slightly modified exhaust. Let's see which one sounds better. Yeah, I've got to admit that the aftermarket exhaust on that C5 sounds better than my stock C4, but neither car sounds bad. Both sound awesome. Can't beat a small block Chevy V8. All right, so we're going to do the quarter mile here, so I'm in automatic <laughs> drive. I've got my ride control to performance, traction control off. You don't even have traction control, right? No, and I kind of wish that I did because my tires are old and it's very cold outside, so I'm expecting a lot of wheel spin. All right, here we go. In three, two, one, go. I think I lost the GoPro. Well, I didn't lose a GoPro, but I lost that race really badly. Yeah, so this is far from ideal conditions for these cars. So we are up here at a mile above sea level, which really impacts naturally aspirated vehicles. And it's super cold outside. And this is far from a prep surface, this airstrip. So uh, let's see how I did in the C5. I just ran a 15.24 at 99.2 miles an hour. Now everyone in the comments is gonna say, you don't know how to drive. There's no way to mess it up. You just floored in the C5 Corvette with an automatic. It's just that the altitude and the conditions really negatively impact those numbers. 
but I still squished the C4. Yeah, I only eked out a measly 16.89 at 89 miles per hour trap speed, which is the worst run I've done in this car yet. Again, it's really cold, really hard to get traction off the line. This car is all torque and no horsepower. I think the fastest you ran um, in the past was what, like a, a 16 flat up here at, at elevation. So you're a little bit off the numbers. I sure am off the numbers on this C5. But let's go ahead and run a rolling race and we'll see what happens. Guys, I gotta show you this crazy cool truck up for auction right now over at TFL Biz. This is a 2001 Dodge Dakota four wheel drive in super clean condition with just 92,000 miles of V8 and a manual transmission. This thing is the holy grail. It's absolutely beautiful and it's up for auction right now over at tflbids.com. You gotta check it out. You owe it to yourself to spend time in a Corvette. So Case, before we go ahead and do the rolling race, let's talk a little bit about how much we paid for these cars. So what did you pay for that 88 C4? See, that's the best thing about the C4 Corvette is that my car was only $10,000 and in pretty good shape. I'm under 50,000 miles even. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. And this C5, also under 50,000 miles, in also good shape, came in at 14,000. So it's a little bit more expensive. It's worth noting though, you get 100 more horsepower, at least in this case, 99 to 88, by going to the C5. Yeah, you can also get later model C4s with more horsepower for that same reasonable amount of money. But I went for my C4 because I think it's more stylish than that C5. So if you want performance, that's the way to go. But I like the look of my car. I couldn't agree more. That C4 is beautiful. Just the squared off nature of it's awesome. And let's talk about the interior really quick. So the C5 interior has held up really well. There's no cracks in the dash. It's very functional. Um, it's better screwed together probably than the 80s vet but it does look pretty dreary in here yeah your interior is a lot more durable than mine but it's not quite as unique and stylish and retro and i know people hate the digital gauges on this car but that for me is one of the big draws to this is just so retro futuristic I can't believe I'm agreeing with you again. So even <laughs> though the C4 is kind of a rattly place to spend time, it's a much cooler interior. All right, let's do this rolling race. So we'll we'll uh, set off at 30 miles an hour, and I'll go three, two, one, go on go. We plant it, and we get to the line. Sounds good to me. All right, let's start rolling. Now in this automatic C5, I'm just going to leave it in drive. I don't have as many options as Case. Okay, there's 30. start a little bit and you also uh, were a little asleep at the switch for the start and, and even so that C5 that that extra horsepower just comes out you know I, I kind of slept a little bit and then the automatic had to downshift and that certainly hit me but then once we got to like 80 85 miles an hour you just couldn't keep up with the, uh, the might of the LS engine and that's why people love the LS engine is because it's such a versatile platform you can use it in anything it's just great yeah, there really is a lot of top end in that car. It's impressive. The issue is, of course, the automatic and the super long gears kind of hamper the performance. Um, I'm sure I can get a lot more out of it if I had the two-speed manual. Compass now. See why this all-American legend is better than ever. All right, Case, we're about to do the braking test. What's the procedure on this guy? So what we do is we get up to 60 miles per hour, and then as soon as we cross the line that the cones draw across the track, we both slam on our brakes. We both got ABS, so it should be an interesting comparison. Sounds good to me. Now, this Corvette does not have any of the fancy C5 stuff. It's not a Z06. It's not a Z51. This is just a base Corvette. How about yours? 
Yeah, same here. In this situation, it's completely apples to apples. This is just an early model standard C4 Corvette. All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay, so accelerating up to 60. We're gonna match position. Surprising! Why is that C4 the freaking greatest slowing down car in the history of the automobile? I'll tell you what I think has been helping me out is that before we did any of these drag races or braking tests, I went through this car and... I did all new brake fluid, all new brake pads, and I bled the brakes. So the braking system on my car is perfect. Yeah, clearly. That's amazing. All right, let's see what the difference is. this car has done in the past. Yeah, so thumb consistent. 13 feet short in the C5. Maybe we'll put brakes on the C5 and see if we can improve those distances. That would be good to see, yeah. It'd be Absolutely. good to see. <laughs> All right, let's go close this up. All right, okay, so between C5 and C4, we know that the C5 is a quicker vehicle. It's a more modern vehicle. It's a little bit more expensive, but which one are you taking? I mean, if you really care about going fast, C5 is the one to have. It's just so much more horsepower and there's a lot more that you can do with that engine to then even take that to even crazier and crazier heights. If you want a little bit more of a cruiser, a little bit more old school, kind of like what I wanted, C4 is the way to go. And generally, I would say that these C4s are also cheaper. Great point. All right, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. As always, this has been Tommy and, and Case. We'll see you on the next episode. The All-American Legend is better than ever. Corvette.